for the Dolphins with six seconds of counting. Passaturo puts up the three, and yes! Cannon for three points for Christina Passaturo. The eight to go into the second half. CSI down one for the sake of post up, puts it in, and it will count, and he will draw the foul as well, go to the line of shoot, and complete a possible three-point play. All right, we're back here in the Open Mic program. Glad you could join us here tonight as uh, we have a little spe- special show here today as we are back in the friendly confines of our studio here at Cimitar Studios. We were su- we were hoping to be doing basketball here tonight. Uh, you asked me a week ago, I would probably would have told you that tonight I would have been doing men's and women's basketball championships in the Kuniak for the College of Staten Island, but unfortunately, CSI on both on both cases was eliminated by Brooklyn College. Uh, men were eliminated on Tuesday, 78-69. to 69. Women were eliminated by Brooklyn College on Wednesday, 76-70. to 70. Really, both games, in a lot of ways, felt really identical. Uh, start from the men's standpoint, as they lost against 78-69. to 69. Uh, They went to halftime there down only one point, 29-28. And in the second half, really had a lot of issues. We're struggling to hit from the three throw line. Shot only forty two percent for the game from the three at the three throw line that night. Uh, shot only thirty eight percent in the game. And really, this has been a team. And I've been you know watching this game, watching this team all season, doing their games, play by play in color with uh, the great Mike Babuski over there at the College of Staten Island. And this has been a team that usually shoots around on the men's on the men's side around high thirties. You know, around somewhere between high thirties and mid, mid, low to mid forties percentage. You know, I would say about forty, forty, forty-one percent usually in the game, and they just didn't even shoot close to that. Uh, really struggled from long distance, only five twenty-two in the game, uh, and it just didn't look like it, it. You know, a lot of the things that we saw during the year where they struggled from the three throw line, uh, st- had a couple spells during the year where they went cold. It if it shows up in a, in a bit in a, at the wrong time. It will hurt you, and it showed up in the wrong time, in the wrong spot, like it did in these in this playoff game against Brooklyn. Um, first, you got to tip your cap to Brooklyn. That's a very good basketball team over there. Uh, you're talking about three players there who can do a lot of damage. Jamal Guest only had 15 in that game, but the night, the night before, he put down 36 in a game. Okay, the guy's a very good shooter. Uh, Exxon J- Jambalaj, again, and a guy who was a really difficult guy for them to guard. Uh, a guy who has a very good inside presence, is a very good center, can shoot the basketball very well. He had 20 points. And then Lorenzo Williams, who they held pretty quiet when they saw uh, him at the end of January, had 23. So, you know, those are three guys that are very difficult to guard against. Uh, they almost played the entire game, 39 minutes, 37 minutes, 37 minutes uh, for Brooklyn. Tip your cap to them. They they earned it for uh, in this game against Staten Island. Uh, but for the men... A disappointing finish because I thought that this was a team that could do a lot of good things. Um, and that's nothing against any other teams in the men, on the men's side in the Cuniac because it was a very competitive conference. Uh, we saw a team, Megger Evers, who, yes, they lost in this tournament early on in this tournament, uh, but they had a very special player, Matthew Lee, who, in my mind, was the player of the of the conference there. I mean, the guy was an absolute monster. Um you know, averaging about 20-something points a game, uh, would get a lot of rebounds, would hit three-pointers like it was nothing. Uh, he was really the guy who carried that team, especially during that five-game winning streak down the stretch. Uh, Lehman, of course, was very good this year. They had a lot of good depth. And now we've seen Baruch get on fire here down the stretch, and they're now in the championship game tonight against Brooklyn. So there are a lot of good teams in conference. But I thought that CSI had a very good chance. Uh, they had a couple. They had a, a few seniors there in the team, uh, Will Fonseca, Thomas Delianti, and Greg Civiletti. Uh, of course, Fonseca was one of their top scorers uh, this year. Was their top scorer this year? Has been one of their top scorers through, throughout his career, uh, averaging 23 points a game this year. Had 608 points, folks. That's incredible. 608 points this year in tw- in 27, 25 games. That what an what an amazing job he had that did this year. Uh, it's unfortunate that he can't get a championship. Unfortunate, someone like Thomas Delianti, who's a very good defensive player, does very nicely on the glass, unable to get that. But still, this team does have players on the men's side that they can build off of. 
they have a lot of they have a lot of good good sophomores. They do, of course, or will be a lead going into next year with their going into a senior year and Frank Chitino, who was really one of their clutch shooters all year. It was surprising they had struggle, had some issues at the three throw line and overall offensively. I think he was six of fifteen uh, from the three throw line, which is very uncharacteristic for him. But he is one of their more clutch clutch shooters. Uh, he'll be back next year. Uh, you're looking at, as I'm looking at the roster right now, they will have, a, you know, Kalik Baum is going to be a senior next year. Shatino is going to be a senior next year. Kari Rollick will be a senior next year. Uh, Vincent DeCunto will be a senior next year. Uh, Jamal Hopper will be a senior next year. So they're going to have some some senior some players as, as seniors. And they're going to have a bunch of sophomores right now, like Eden Brachich, Kevon Murphy, who played well in the game against Brooklyn, uh, who will be juniors going into next season. So they're going to have some players. And, of course, whoever Tony Potosa can go out and uh, recruit for a new group, of course, of uh, sophomores and freshmen for the for the future. So I think they'll be fine. But it's tough. You know, it's tough when you win 19 games and you have a good team and you have, good, and you have really a nice balance and you're unable to get the job done. So that, that was unfortunate there. And from the women's side, kind of the same thing. Um, this was a this was a, a, a kind of a weird game to watch because the the Lady Dolphins in this game against Brooklyn had a, they 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 had everything going against them at times in this game and they always found ways to come back you know early in the game they had two of their t- two of their starters foul uh, you know draw a couple of fouls and Jimmy Piflo and uh, and Rosa Perone and both of them had to sit on the bench for most of that first quarter almost the entire first quarter. And yet, they still went out there, came from behind, and had an 18-15 to 15 lead up to, after the first quarter. Uh, same kind of thing happened a little bit in the second quarter. Uh, granted, we did see uh, Brooklyn College go on, a, on, go on a 5-0 run at the end of the quarter to cut it down to one point. But, you know, CSI did have a 32-31 lead at the half. They had a couple of big threes by Victoria Gallinero there right before halftime. That was huge. So... They had things going against them. There were a lot of fouls called. They were in foul trouble for most of the night on the, on the roster. They had, uh, overall, three players at the end of the day uh, foul out of the game. They had another player with four fouls. It was, a t- it was tough. It was a tough night from that standpoint. But they still found a way to hang in there. And I think that's what makes it most frustrating because at one point, here we are, fourth quarter. This game is now 60-60, to 60, Okay. 60 to 60. Let me just pull up the play by play just to make sure, because uh, I want to get make sure I get the right the shooter correct, the name of the shooter from Brooklyn correct. CSI is down 60 to 55. You get a big big three pointer by Gallinaro, makes it a two point game. You then get a foul inside on on uh, Brooklyn College. They go to the free throw line. Does CSI. Christina Passatoro hits a couple of a couple of three throws, ties it up at 60, and then Taylor Gallagher, who really had done nothing all day, only had two points up to this point in the game, hits a three pointer in the corner and makes it 63-60. This at the same time, a foul is called on uh, one of their big players, Maya Aja Thomas for Brooklyn. To me and to Mike Babuski, we both both kind of thought that man, you know, maybe. Uh, that that three point shot should not count because they did call an offensive foul. Still, they decided the officials met. They decided that they were going to let the three pointer stand. Uh, Tim Shanahan was not happy about that. Obviously, uh, neither were we sitting there doing the game. But uh, there we were with Brooklyn College up sixty three to sixty, and really they never looked back again after that. Uh, CSI tried to get close. They got close to sixty three sixty two. They got within. One point again on a couple three throws by Christina Pasturo, make it 65-64, but really never really challenged again and got closer again after that. Um, it was just a tough night. And when you have a team in Brooklyn that was kind of imposing its will, uh, drawing fouls at every which way and going to the free throw line and knocking down their shots and also going inside, putting up shots, missing shots, and then rebounding their own miss. I mean, there were, you know, there were so many points in this game where Brooklyn would go, go go in there, inside the lane, inside the paint, miss shots, and then rebound their own shots. They had in the game overall, let's see here, 20, 29, they had in the game overall 54 total rebounds, 
25 of which were offensively. CSI only had 27 rebounds in the game. Think about that. CSI in the game only 27 rebounds, whereas Brooklyn had 54-25 offensively. They got so many second-chance opportunities. I know they only came away with, what, eight second-chance points in the game? Doesn't matter. The fact is, they keep rebounding it. They draw fouls when they continue to rebound the basketball, and they go to the line, they shoot their three throws. And that, at the end of the day, is why they find a way to pull away and win the game from CSI. So, really a tough loss from that standpoint. But again, uh, it doesn't damper what was a fantastic season for the women as well, who won 18 games this year. And I thought, Kind of like the men, I thought they had a good chance, and I thought they even had a better chance to win the whole thing because we had, we had seen them, you know, go into Lehman and win in Lehman. We had seen them take care of Brooklyn College in their own building at home. We had seen them, you know, blow people away one week after the other, one day after the other, um, throughout the course of the season. You know, jump out to twenty-one to four leads uh, in the first quarter. So, from that standpoint, I thought they were the most more, most impressive team. In the conference, and again, that's nothing to take away from any of these teams. Brooklyn College, who beat them, is a very talented team in this conference. Uh, Lehman, who will, who Brooklyn will face tonight, is a very talented team in the conference. But I thought CSI's uh, women's basketball team had a very good chance to win it, win it all. But as they say, sometimes magic works. Sometimes the magic doesn't, and it just didn't work on um, this night. Uh, they will lose a couple players: Francis Gonzalez, Jamie Piffalo and Victoria Gallinero, who will be seniors. But overall, you go up and down that roster, folks, very young roster. They have right now one, two, three. I'm just counting right now. One, two, three, four freshmen this year. One, two, three, four sophomores and one junior. So you do the math. There's going to be a lot of returning players, and this is a team that's very good. You know, Pasatoro's going to be a junior next year. Flecker's going to be a junior next year. Those are the top two scores. So they got they got a they got a lot of potential and they're going to be a good basketball team next year, uh, that is for sure. It is it is tough, again, like I said with the men, when you get this far and you have a chance to win it, and you have a team that is rolling, you have a team that is meshed very well, and you have a nice mix of seniors and juniors and 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 younger players, and it just doesn't it doesn't mesh at the right time in the big spot in the playoffs. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. So we'll see if they're able to do that again next year. On the broadcast end of things, uh, i got to say, I really did enjoy doing the basketball games with Mike uh, uh, Babuski as well as David Pizzuto. Uh, it really was an, an, really an honor to join them this year and to, to do those games out there at the College of Staten Island. It's, it's amazing how much success, and I really didn't realize this when I joined in, how much success, uh, that institution has enjoyed athletically. I mean, all their teams on the basketball front, on the even the volleyball front, even on the baseball and softball front, all done well. And we're about to do games for their baseball and softball uh, season, and those are two teams that are defending uh, Kuniak champions on both sides. So, you know, it should be a lot of fun to do those games as well. Uh, let me just pull up the schedule here. Because our first game that we will be doing for them in in Softball will be on March the 6th. Softball game against Rutgers Newark is a doubleheader at 12 noon. And those are usually, I believe, seven inning games. So that will be the case there. Same kind of rule we have in the KDM League where you have uh, doubleheaders that are seven innings. And my first baseball game with them will be on March the 12th, a Saturday. That is against... St. Joe's of Brooklyn at noon as well. So those are my, my first two games on the baseball and softball front. From the basketball front, it was a, really a, a, an honor and a pleasure to call those games uh, and to to witness all those ga- to witness those games on a uh, on, on a nightly basis. 